you know, maybe it was on the heels of a couple of successes on, uh, of, uh, of taxation in the mid-'80s that caused us to begin thinking in those terms. But the, I mentioned the 1984 road tax. Well, in 1985, the parish did something that today still remains unique across the state, and, I'm, it, it, and I just can hardly believe that, hasn't, that it, it, it hasn't been uh, uh, followed by other parishes, and that's the criminal justice tax that we passed in 1985. When Richard Ayew was elected district attorney with a pretty good uh, majority vote, we went over to him and said, look, we're, we're, the parish is having a tough time meeting the needs of the, the district court and the district attorney's office right now from the general fund. We're almost sucking air here in terms of being able to try to meet their needs. And Richard and I have laughed since then that, you know, his, his, his whole um, campaign uh, had these videos on, on the TV, new, uh, TV about the, the, the jail door slamming shut. You remember those? Uh, jail doors would slam shut and law and order and all this kind of stuff. Well, I, I, I told Richard, I said, those are really good ads, but this is after he was elected. I said, it's really good ads, but uh, we don't have the money to do what you, you're going to need more DA, assistant DAs, you're going to need more money to do this. We don't have the money to do that. So we presented to him the idea of a criminal justice tax that would be voted, that would fund the DA and the judges and be able to put in place the kind of programs that he had campaigned on to build a criminal justice system here like like he won campaigning on. And that passed. That was 1985. Well, by the time 87 had rolled around, um, you know, he was wanting more court dates. We had limited courtrooms available in the old courthouse. The old courthouse was falling in. It was built in 1912. It was, it was falling into disrepair. Uh, the jail was absolutely inadequate. It was sitting on the site that the Judicial Center sits on now. It, 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 was, it was inadequate from several reasons, not the least of which is that, you know, the open windows and as women would walk by on the street, they'd be getting cat calls and pretty obscene things being yelled at them from the jail windows and all. And we tried to put some shades on there to keep that from happening, but it didn't really, it didn't stop it. There were a lot of basis to try to look for, for something else. At that time, there was some uh, federal money coming available through the state for construction of jails on a matching basis. Well, that was all well and good, except we didn't have the money that it would take to match that. So we put together a capital improvement plan, a proposal for a bond issue that would go before the voters in the parish to do several things. It would be to build a new jail, which would necessitate the, the uh, uh, demolition of the old jail. The construction of a new judicial center, which would provide for enough courtrooms for the judges and the DA to actually address the criminal justice issues in the parish, which the old courthouse did not do. Um, it would be an expansion to the DA's office. They, were out, they had outgrown the building that had been built at that point about 11 years earlier, 10 or 11 years earlier. Uh, and it was to restore the old courthouse, not, not renovate necessarily, but to restore it to its previous grandeur. If, if you could have walked in the courtroom A prior to that restoration and seen what had happened to that room over the years. Um, put suspended ceilings had been put in, blocking the beautiful dome and medallion and stuff up there. Um, windows had been, things had been put over the windows. The furniture had fallen into disrepair completely. So anyway, that was put together at the, and put before the public. And a companion tax issue was put on the ballot at the same time that was an, uh, a courthouse and jail ad valor maintenance tax first time we'd had that. And the covenant that was adopted along with those by the jury said, if the capital improvement tax passes, the bond issue passes, and the maintenance tax does not pass, we're not, we're not spending any of the capital money because we're not going to bill something we don't have the money to maintain. Um, if the ad valorem tax passes for maintenance and capital doesn't, we're not going to levy it either. It had to be it was an all or nothing. It had to, both had to pass. Well, they did. And so beginning in 1988, we began levying the taxes, and we started very, very methodically. With the, We had to um, build a new jail. That was the first thing on the list, to, to build it so that this one could be torn down so that the judicial center could be put on the site that, that it was on. And, uh, you know, there were little hills along the way, uh, hurdles that we needed to um, – we, we won – kind of an anecdotal story is we when we got ready to when we tore the old jail down we got ready to build the judicial center um, and the architects and engineers began drilling 
to see where the foundations were going to be. It was going to have to be a lot closer to Lakeshore Drive. But what they found is that there was a an old septic system under Lakeshore Drive coming on up into the property that that probably was put in in the early 1900s that was not even showing on any records that the city had. So we had an issue involving how to deal with the foundation of that. That was one. It was just those kind of things. And then you go to to restore a, a building built in 1912, they were finding walls that weren't walls in the original uh, building that had been put up years and years later that, again, did not show up on a set of plans. So it was challenging for the architects to be able to do what they did. But one of the crowning glories of what was done, not only to the exterior of the building to bring back its its previous grandeur, but what was done in courtroom A it was just incredible to bring that room back to the way it looked in 1912. We are still convinced that if Hollywood ever wants to film a turn of the century courtroom scene or an early 1900s courtroom scene, they could not find a better venue for that than that room. It looks just like it did then. And uh, the furniture, all the seats were, we didn't put new auditorium seats in there. We pulled all those up. They were refinished by a company out of Tennessee. Uh, looking just like they looked uh, almost a hundred years earlier. Dr. Joe Cash, uh, who was with, uh, I think, not only the Calcasieu Historical Society, but Calcasieu Preservation Society, both, uh, we involved them in particularly the restoration of the, of the interior courtroom A, but also uh, on the exterior, and he was primarily responsible for uh, retaining those, those uh, pole lights that are on the front steps of the courthouse. Uh, the, Architects had intended to put some new, similar-looking things out of aluminum or something like that, and he gave that a big raspberry. He said, "No, we're not going. We don't need to do that. Let's do something about restoring that." And he had a personal affinity for light fixtures in general. Uh, in fact, he also helped us design the big chandelier that's in courtroom A. That was a uh, the, the lighting that was projected to go in there was not at all like that one. So he did a huge amount of research. Uh, they couldn't find exactly what was there originally. But, of course, all that had been taken out because they'd put a suspended ceiling in there, for goodness sake. And so he helped us with that and worked with the design. And so, I, I, you know, did great kudos go to Dr. Cash and some of his uh, folks that worked with us from those two societies, Historical Preservation Society, um, for what was able to be done. And I think that's why the pride level is, is what it is for that building. One of the last things that was done, it wasn't even contemplated as part of that original original bond issue, was the replacement of the dome. Um, it, that that was just something that really came up. Uh, the 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 dome had been there for at that point for ninety something years, um, but subsequent to the improvements that were made there, it, it was seen that there were some leaks, there were some problems there that were causing structural damage. So, the parish in the last year uh, contracted with a firm out of I think out of Dallas that came in and recoppered the dome. They even uh, sprayed it with a particular chemical that hastened the patina look of the copper, which w caused some people some, uh, some people said, well, why don't we leave it copper? Well, it, it wasn't going to stay copper anyway, and to, you know, the, the patina on that was part of the, what made that dome what it was. So they, uh, they advanced the, the process that caused it to turn green. But anyway, that, that's, that's huge. That, that, I think the decision that was made to not tear down that courthouse, which there was a hue and cry to, to, by some to say, well, why in the world would you leave that old building? It's not functional. The halls are, you know, it's just not built for today's uh, work and everything. And to some extent, that's true. But how many of those icons have we lost uh, because of short-sightedness? And I think it was not the police jury. I don't think there was a single police juror that thought that, demolishing that building was, uh, was something that should even be remotely considered.